So the Ferrari 499P is in Project Track Day, or in other words, the 500P, and we will be putting it through an awful amount of tests to see how it compares with real life. We're gonna have speed traps, we're gonna have corner speeds, we're gonna have apex speeds, we're gonna have everything in this video. So without further ado, I'll see you guys at the start-finish line of Fuji, which is also where we will do our first comparison, that is the sound design. So both of the cars are up on our screens right now, so let's have a listen. Okay, it looks promising so far. I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys, they still need to do lots of work on the sound design. However, I guess it's a good first step. More specifically, they need to dive into the gear shifts and the hybrid system. Those are the two main factors that really need changing. Now, you may be noticed in the comparison that the Ferrari in Project Track Day was miles quicker through the corners than the one in real life. However, that's just because it was raining at Fuji. So, let's take two dry laps and compare them to each other. You guys will be very much surprised. So, you guys still haven't seen the comparison, but me looking at it through the editing, it's disgustingly close. Just look at how the first sector unfolds. So, turn one we go, and as you can see, it's exactly the same. So moving on to the next few corners, as if turn 1 wasn't impressive enough, look at this. The cars are going to be exactly equal on the exit of these three sequence of corners, going under the bridge. I mean, just, just look at it. How is this even possible? Going through the small shade of Fangio now, and as you can see, they're still exactly the same. This is so, so, so impressive, and we're even braking at the exact same frame. And no, this is not editing, this is fully uncut footage. Anyways, moving on through this couple of tight corners, as you can see, we're both lifting up at some different places, but that's just the driver input. However, we're both braking at the same time and even taking the apex the same exact way. I don't even know if they made the track or they imported it. If you guys know, do let me know in the comments, but I, I, I actually I can't figure out how, how they could possibly do this. Anyway though, we'll be heading through the final corner to finish this lap and then we can move on with our video. Through the final corner we go then and as you can see, it's still exactly the same. <laughs> and uh, in editing I also noticed that we braked at the exact same point, so I don't know. I, I genuinely don't know. So that was fun and everything, doing real life comparisons and all that stuff. However, we haven't actually talked about how this car feels or what it costs yet. The answer to the cost question you will know after this lap, however the answer of how it feels you will know in this lap. So I'll catch you guys when I start the lap. So it's pedal to the metal through the final corner as we're heading straight towards that start finish line of Le Caslet and we will be heading down into turn 1 very shortly. Now this car has really great acceleration and reaches the top speed very very quickly, I'm not sure if that's realistic enough or not, but we're going to be braking right before that 100 meter signboard into turn 1, make sure we don't miss that braking point as we can run wide and get ourselves a penalty. Onto those exit curbs then we go, thankfully that wasn't a penalty, in Le Caslet it's so so easy to get a penalty for yourself. However, we still haven't done that. Well, yet. And I say that with extreme caution. As we move on, though, I think you guys can see how stable this car is. It's one of the most stables. Probably it is the most stable that Project Track Day has ever released. You don't have to save it on exits of the corners. And I think that's quite realistic, actually. The LMH cars have some great, great downforce. And I cannot wait to actually show you this through this high-speed corner. I'm going to try and take it flat out. Let's see if that works. If it doesn't, then that's still okay. We can have another try at it. So here we go. Through this high-speed corner, do we take it flat? Actually, no, 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 no. I don't have the confidence for that yet. However, all I'm trying to say is this car feels actually really nice. And uh, props to the devs for whoever made the chassis on this. The model is really great, the car feels great, it's probably the fastest on Project Track Day if we use hybrid properly, which I'm not doing currently, but I will start doing it in maybe a lap or two. And also keep in mind that this is entirely custom made, they did not import it, so plus one for that. So we're gonna have at it one more time as it's currently night time, so that's really nice to see I suppose. We're gonna be heading for that 100 meter signboard and uh, we actually perfect turn one. That's absolutely amazing. Do we get a penalty? Ah, uh, we get a penalty. All right, let's go at it one more time around the castlet. If it doesn't work out, we change circuits and we put the car to the test there. Uh, do we reach the speed? Yes, we do. Way, way before turn one, I should add. 
heading for that 100 meter board do we perfect turn one i mean uh, not too bad i do miss the apex though onto the exit that's a good exit though i have to say heading straight for those uh little fast few corners we're going to be using third gear through there i suppose yep there we go heading through here make sure we don't get a penalty on the exit of any of those corners if you run wide or cut the track by just a little bit, you get a penalty, which is really, really bad for you. Onto this big straight we go now. Kind of take this flat out. There we go. We're going to be using the hybrid as well. And I have to say, guys, the car looks absolutely beautiful. Top job. Do we take this flat? No, I missed the apex again. Ah, damn it. So, Monza in a Ferrari. Doesn't get any better than this, does it? As we use all of the hybrid we possibly can before crossing the line, just so we make sure that we reach the top speed of 347 kilometers an hour, breaking between 200 and 150 meters, making sure we don't miss our breaking point as we're going through turn one. And if you've played Project Track Day before, you will know that through turn one, you can easily lose your car. However, with this one, you just press on the throttle and you have nothing to worry about as the downforce really helps you get through that one. Through into the next chicane we go between 200 and 150. 50 meters as well maybe yeah a bit too wide there but that's fine we save it see much much easier to save the car through there as we're heading towards the lesmos now down shifting into third up to fourth mid corner and then heading to the second lesmo down shifting to third again probably would be best to keep it on fourth there because shifting up to fifth maybe takes a bit too much time heading now downhill under the bridge and now up to ascari we're gonna break 150 meters down into fourth through Ascari we go can we do this flat we can absolutely do this flat the car just loves being thrown around around here now through here we go we're going to use the extra bit of hybrid we have breaking at 150 meters that was just about perfect through parabolica use the rest of the hybrid as fast as you possibly can don't get a penalty there we go i was so worried that we we're going to get a penalty through there but we crossed the line and that is an absolutely amazing uh lap now, let's get a cooldown lap for ourselves and talk about this update. So, the car currently costs 1.4 million for the absolute top level. So, if you are a lower level, unfortunately, the car will cost a bit more. But it's much, much better than the overpriced buggy mess we got with the IndyCar update. Hell, the IndyCar update didn't even have a working steering wheel, let alone any hybrid or push to pass. So, overall, much, much better update this one. And hopefully, the next couple of updates are as good as this one. Now, what I mean with the next couple of updates, since we got a new category, the LMHs, we're probably going to see more cars in there, like the Peugeot 9x8, the Cadillac, the BMW, hopefully they all are there soon. However, it's time for the final lap of this video, and also guys, let me know what you think of this update down in the comments. Is it overpriced still? Is it broken still? How have you guys experienced it so far? Anyways, though, heading into turn 1, as our driver level has increased up to 60, that's absolutely insane, breaking in between 200 and 150 meters, as always, and as always, getting a great exit with this car, absolutely amazing how much you can push it through there using the rest of the hybrid now and if you use it on corners it's gonna get very understeery very quickly so just make sure you're aware of that now we're gonna break just between there as well is that too much it's probably too much yeah as we get a penalty for that i'm not gonna do any more laps this was the video the car looks absolutely lovely everything works as intended which is something we did not see with the previous update but yeah, top job on the modeling, top job with whoever made the chassis for this one, and uh, hopefully the next couple of updates introduce more LMHs. But that's all from me for this one, hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys in my very next video. Bye bye.